right? So then we, we sat with him and the Sayyid Muhammad, he, he, he grabbed me from my, from my chest, right? He said to me, he said to me, how much money have you got with you? Do you have enough money? I said, yes. No, the first question he asked, he said, where are you staying? Do you have a place to stay? And we mentioned that we were staying with, in the house of Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jili, uh, uh, a Sudanese Sheikh who had a madrasa in Makkah al Mukarramah, and he said, fine. Then the Sayyid said, do you have enough money? I said, yes. Then I thought that the Sayyid probably felt that I was shy. I was standing up, and the Sayyid was sitting on a rocky chair, and he grabbed me from my chest, and he pulled me towards him. He grabbed me from my chest, and he pulled me towards him and he whispered, he whispered in my ear and he said, how much money do you have? I said about 400 pounds. And he let me go and I was released <laughs> and I fell back. I was released and I fell back. Right? So he was a very jolly student, a very jolly teacher. His students say that in his lessons he would crack a lot of jokes. Right? He would crack a lot of jokes. Why? To keep the atmosphere of the lesson very jolly so that the students don't get tired and don't feel burdensome and so that they come back for the next lesson. And his father was also extremely jolly and he used to crack a lot of jokes uh, within the lessons. Right? Sayyid Muhammad, from amongst the things that he used to do to his students out of love and affection, he used to bite them on their ears. <laughs> right? When someone would come and kiss his hand, he would bite them on the ear, extending his love and affection. As for his father, Sayyid Alawi, who was also a teacher in the Haram of Makkah in Masjid al-Haram, one day his father was teaching in Masjid al-Haram, and one man came to the Shaykh's circle gathering, and he shouted out, he said, Shaykh, is Mawlid allowed? And you know the type of person this was, yeah? He said, Shaykh, is Mawlid allowed? And Sayyid Alawi was very sharp and very clever, he clicked on straight away that this guy is trying to stir trouble with me, a Sunni Alim and the government. So what did the Sayyid do? Sayyid Alawi, Sayyid Muhammad's father, uh, he said to the questioner, he said, what does the government say about Mawlid? And the questioner said, the government said it's not allowed. Sayyid Alawi said, Shurti, policeman, come, take him. He's asking me a question about a matter that the government opposes. The policeman <laughs> took him and locked him up. <laughs> Right? See how sharp the scholar is? You, you have to read the questioner before you listen to his question. One of our teachers, Sheikh Ali Baghdadi, he says, uh, when I be in my masjid and someone comes and asks me one question, I ask myself 50 questions about this person before I answer the question. Why has this person asked me the question? Why didn't he go and ask anyone else the question? What does he want from my answer? Is he testing me? Is he manipulating me? What will he do with my answer after I finish? Will he go and cross-reference it with someone else? Will he go and check it with someone else? Is he shopping around for fatwas and wherever he feels content, he'll say, that's fine, I'll take it from here. He said, I ask 50 questions to myself before I answer this person's question. So Sayyid Alawi was a very jolly person and he used to crack jokes in his lesson. And another one he did, which I was told of by my friend uh, Sayyid Muhammad Ali Al-Jufri, he said that someone asked Sayyid Alawi, Sayyid Muhammad's father, said, uh, Sayyidi, when we get to Jannah, insha'Allah, will we have the argila, the shisha? You know this thing, the uqqa, right? They call it the argila or the shisha in the Arab world. The Pakistanis call it the uqqa, right? Someone asked Sayyid Alawi, will we have the, the argila or the shisha or the uqqa? And Sayyid Alawi said, he said, yes, but you'll have to pop into Jahannam to get the coals. <laughs> So you'll have to pop into Jahannam to get the calls and come back. Now, so Sayyid Muhammad, uh, the author of this book, he was a very jolly man. He was a very loving man. He was a very caring man. Very loving, very jolly, a very caring man. The, the son of our teacher, uh, our teacher, Sheikh Adib al-Kallas, one of his sons was not married. And he went to Makkah al-Mukarramah, made, made Umrah al-Hajj, and he went to visit Sayyid, uh, Sayyid Muhammad in his house. Sayyid Muhammad said to him, you're not married? He said, no Sayyid. Mm. Sayyid Muhammad said, said to one of his students, he said, go and bring me the hand of Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. Go and bring me the hand of Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha, the, the mother of the believing people, the, the first wife of the Prophet sallallahu who is buried in Makkah al Mukarramah, and Sayyid Muhammad is buried very close to her. Sayyid Muhammad is buried very close to Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. So when, when young people would come to Sayyid Muhammad who weren't married, 
he would ask one of his students to go and bring the hand of Sayyidah Khadija. This meant go and bring an envelope that he had named the hand of Sayyidah Khadija. In there, he would give these young people money that would help them get married. Right? Because often young people, one of, the, one of the difficulties they find in marriage is that they don't have enough money. Right? They don't have enough uh, money to go and live their own lives and go and find a spouse, go and find a partner, go and find to get someone that they can get married to. But you know this concept? Is an, a, it's a foreign concept that has come into us. It's a foreign concept that has come into us. For if we follow the Quranic concept in Surah An-Nur, in Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِن يَكُونُوا فُقَرَاءَ يُغْنِهِمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Allah said, if those who are seeking after marriage are fuqara, are poor, they should still get married and Allah will enrich them. Allah will give them ghina. Allah will make them rich through what? Through marriage. And we have the greatest example in the Prophet He was a poor orphan in Makkah al-Mukarramah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He got married and Allah gave him riches. We found you in need. And we, 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 one of his, uh, one of his loving and caring uh, affections towards the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ was towards the young that he used to want to get them married <coughs> off as quick as possible and at an appropriate age, and he would provide for this. <coughs> he would provide them with assistance upon this, and likewise students, students who would stay in his house, he'd be paying them rather than them paying any fees. Why? Because these were people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who wanted to create in the communities examples of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Examples of prophetic inheritance, examples of prophetic character, and examples of prophetic knowledge. Inshallah, in the next lesson, we will begin with the book of Sayyid Muhammad, which speaks about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when, you, when people are leaving uh, our my teacher and our noble friend Hafiz Amjad, who, uh, who virtuously had this blessed book translated into English for the benefit of all of us and for the larger benefit of the English speaking community, uh, has the book at the back, inshallah, uh, for people to purchase. And it is at a cheaper price than normal, and he will be donating some of that amount to the academy, inshallah. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, bless him in that endeavor and inshallah in the next lesson we will start with the actual text of Sayyid Muhammad and we will finish off with some of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat>